The Living Zen Podcast is a gift from the members and associates of the Victoria Zen Center to you. If you enjoy it, please be sure to let your friends know about Living Zen. If you'd like to support our community, here are a few ways that you can do it. Download the Living Zen Podcast app for iPod, iPhone, or Android. You can also purchase additional Zen Talks by Venerable Eshu on iTunes or Amazon.com. One of the most meaningful ways to show your support is by joining our Sangha as an associate. Your commitment of $10 a month will ensure that offerings like the Living Zen Podcast and our online eZendo will continue to be available around the world to everyone with an interest in truly living Zen. To become an associate, please visit our website at www.zenwest.ca and click on the membership tab. Thank you for your support. It's a smaller group here tonight. Uh, Maybe we should have offered some kind of Valentine's Day Groupon or something like that. Hot date at the Tuesday sit at UBIC. Uh, But thank you all for coming. Um, Often I speak about uh, the origin of suffering, the origin of our difficulty as human beings, as being this tendency that we have to divide, to take this world that we live in, to take ourselves and to divide ourselves up into uh, separate, distinct, uh, permanent, lasting sort of objects. So we take myself and I break it off from the rest of the cosmos and I start to invest thought, uh, invest belief in this thing that I call a self, which stands Uh, separate and independent from all of the other stuff out there, the world. This uh, is something that we start to do when we're fairly young. I spoke about this as well recently. That there is uh, one aspect, one dynamic of this activity which affirms or which acknowledges distinction. Uh, The metaphor that I often use is like waves on an ocean. That as individuals, as human beings, we can acknowledge ourselves as being distinct. I can look at a flower and see that it's a flower. I can look at another person and see that they're taller than me or shorter than me, wider than me. But to fixate this and to take it as the only side, this one side of distinctiveness or uh, distinction, is to make a very serious mistake. And when we do this, when we invest in this perspective heavily, this is when we start to become competitive or when we start to become uh, self-critical. Because when we Uh, use this faculty of discrimination, we begin to make this assessment based on a subjective perspective. Uh, That person is better than me, or I'm better than that person. Or that person has more money, and if I had more money, then I would be a better person. Or uh, that person has bigger muscles than me, and if I had bigger muscles, then I'd be better. And this is uh, one side. And uh, to relate it, to make it topical to today, this is often how we make relationship with objects, but it's also how we make relationship with other human beings. When we discriminate the self, when we invest in our idea of who it is that we think we are, we 
we are naturally sort of limited in our minds. There are things that we have and that we do not have. There are things that we do and there are things that we do not do. And so when we begin to look for somebody to enjoy relationship with, we come from a position of deficiency. So we begin to look for a person who can complete us. Sort of Western romantic literature is full of this idea of a soul mate, two hearts that beat as one. That only by finding a uh, 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 matching uh, peace uh, do we become complete. This is the cause of much suffering. So, in Zen practice, we engage in the investigation of this other side. To use, to go back to this metaphor of the ocean, of waves arising and being able to see one another, to investigate, to experience distinction. This other side of practice is to allow those waves to dissolve and to return to the origin in which distinction is not such a great issue, but what arises is the recognition of the source, the origin, one true nature. That all waves, regardless of how high they are or which direction or how fast they're traveling, they arise from one body. They are all made of water. They have the same content. And this is uh, what we engage in when we come to uh, do Zen practice. We find that the world that we live in gives us plenty of practice and plenty of reinforcement in what we call the plus activity, the manifestation side, this arising as a distinct wave. Who am I and who are you and how much have you got? But we don't have so many places that allow us to dissolve, that allow us to experience what it is to unify, to become one. And this experience of unification in the Zen tradition is called the realization of our true nature or realization of our original nature or our original face. Or uh, my teacher used to call it the realization, the manifestation of unconditional love or unconditioned love. That this uh, experience of being at one with, completely unified with where we are, what we're doing. There is nothing that needs to be added in because in this very moment, just as we are, just in what we're doing, there's nowhere else to be. There's nothing else to do. In this moment, we are complete. There's nothing lacking. If there were something lacking, we would not be able to do this activity that we are engaged in. So, how is this manifested in practice? How do we engage in this in practice? This whole path, this whole structure that we offer in Zen practice is aimed at realizing or offers us the opportunity to witness that it is not something that is uh, imposed upon us from outside, this separateness, this idea of duality, this idea of distinctness as being the only side. When we have glimpses of this unifying experience, we recognize that it's not an external thing that comes in to break it apart, but it is habits of our own mind. It's habits that we ourselves engage in over and over and over again. 
Now, I'll give you some examples. So, when we, from the very moment that we walk into the Zendo, the activity is to let go of the distinctive I am self. We encourage this in many, many ways in Zen practice. In the formal uh, Victoria Zen Center, we ask, you know, dress in a certain way. So, from the very beginning, we ask, let go of the vestiges let go of these little things that we use to identify I, that are just me, and dissolve into this practice of community. We don't say, do it all the time. Don't run around dressed like a monk all the time. But for the, for the limited time of practice, allow it. When we enter the zendo, bringing our hands together palm to palm, we meet a form, an established way of practice. And if we're careful, we can observe how we resist it, we bounce off it, we grudgingly kind of go along with it just so that we don't make waves. But how often do we actually allow ourselves to melt into it, to completely become harmonious with the activity that's taking place in that moment? And the whole activity that we engage in here is aimed at offering this opportunity over and over again. So as we continue through an evening of practice, things arise and there are invitations. And each of us has to make this conscious choice, this conscious practice of whether we uh, calcify make ourselves rigid and separate from the experience that we're going through by being an uh, observer or an onlooker or a uh, sort of passive participant. I'm just here uh, for the ride. Or whether we immerse ourselves, whether we dissolve into the experience, becoming the experience itself. So as we sit, are we engaging in the activity of seated uh, zazen, seated meditation? Or are we sitting and looking around and wondering what everyone else is doing? When we're walking, this is a wonderful one, very simple, very simple activity. It's like dancing or a martial art kata, or it's like a synchronized Movement. We walk in step. There's no, um, unless you're the jikijitsu, there is no cognitive function required. You don't have to think about anything. Simply connect with what's going on in front of you and move in harmony with it. The whole line walks like a, a hundred-legged dragon. And we're just a part of it. So we move along with it. When we chant, do we uh, give our voices wholeheartedly to the chanting? Or do we sit back, not even uh, taking out chant sheets and, and say, oh, well, when's this going to be over? Or, oh, I don't do chanting. I'm just here for the sitting. Just separating, calcifying, better than, lesser than, I'm not going to participate in this part. I'm only going to participate in the parts that I like. This uh, practice over and over again, it's not about getting it right. It's not about being a good practitioner this way or that. The practice of seated meditation, zazen, allows us to wake up to realize, to uh, generate this energy and awareness, to witness how we behave, to witness how we perceive and how we interact in relationship with ourselves and with all things in this vast cosmos. It allows us to witness how we interact with things and how our interactions shape our experience. 
And it offers us an opportunity to transform, to experiment, and to change the way we behave and the way that we perceive and experience our lives. As we sit and as we walk and as we chant and as we bow and as we share this space together, we have an opportunity to sit isolated in a room full of people in a beautiful environment and to be completely alone. Or we have an opportunity with a group of people in a wonderful environment to dissolve, to experience the manifestation of unconditioned unconditional love, completion in this very moment, in each and every activity of our lives. That distinction, that division between experiences is not one that is imposed upon us from some outside thing. It's not a matter of uh, external condition. It is a matter of how we apply ourselves. It's a matter of how we uh, allow ourselves to experience, perceive, and relate to the world around us. Okay. Thanks for listening to the Living Zen Podcast. If you follow Living Zen through iTunes, I would very much appreciate it if you would take a moment to let me know what you think about it by rating or reviewing the podcast so that new listeners can also hear what you have to say. Thank you for your time and for your support.